Alrighty. So, as of right now, howdy, as of right now, I'm seeing the counter. It says I'm live, and I don't know for sure whether I'm live. So, how about, hey, I see me on the, uh, on the live watch thing here. So, howdy, everyone. Let's see, let's see, farm, farm alarm. Hey, Pat. Howdy. Hey, uh, I saw your email. I will respond to you. I will get a response to you. Uh, after things, what up? Do 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 do. Farm alarm. Today's home inspector. What's up, folks? Howdy, howdy. Okay, now, so you, I'm wanting to figure out how I can get the view of me on on here without. It's not saying that the, it's not showing the preview. Okay, well, we will go without, and we will we will watch from we'll watch myself in the past tense. I think there's about a five to ten second delay to watch myself off the watch page. All right, who else is here? Who else is here? After things, glam fam, howdy, good to see you. Good to see you, Linwood. I assume this is Linwood, yes. Uh, hi, volume. Hi, Karen. Hey, good to see you. Okay, well, we, it is one o'clock by my clock, so let's get rolling here. And so what I'm going to do, just going to jump into things here, and uh, probably going to take, uh, there will be plenty of time for questions. So just uh, be asking those questions, and I will stop down periodically. Otherwise, I want to make sure Ah, good. Linwood here. Right on. Um, otherwise, I'll stop down periodically. So, um, here's what's going on. Uh, my name is Jeff Barch, and I'm the founder of Story Greenlight here. And you might wonder what's going on here. Uh, Story Greenlight is all about creative video editing and powerful storytelling to help you, as content creators, turn up the impact of your message and to connect with your audience and to change people's lives. That's ultimately what we're all about here. So this is a way to do that in light of the fact that I am a more than full-time television editor working here in Los Angeles. And uh, I am I'm coming to you over lunch hour. You might have seen a couple of the blogs. Oh, good grief, how is this gonna work on this delay? Ah, well, just do this. Um, you might have seen some of the vlogs that I've done uh, over lunch hour. This is the, this is my home away from home right here. And uh, just give you a little tour of the space. So I promise it's a real live, it's a real live edit bay. It's not just a random gray room, a gray box like it kind of looks here. But you know what? This is, this is live stream number one. And we're still getting our feet wet, and it's uh, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of cracking up about how how things change and how some things don't change. Uh, was just thinking about how editing has changed ever since film was ever since motion picture film was invented, and then they invented television. And they didn't have a good way to record live tele uh, television at that point, so everything was live, and then everything shifted over to being recorded. And now, uh, especially on digital media, people are talking about, oh, well, it's all about live, all about live. So it's it's crazy to think how things change and things don't stay the same. So just gonna check out the notes here. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. Here's what's going to go down. We're going to be talking about unlocking the mental game of video editing. And um, some of you, uh, I, I, I know about, I, I know some of you, I don't know about all of you in terms of where you are in your editing. Uh, some of you might look at video editing and it's like, oh, well, it's this super simple basic thing. And other folks might, I, well, I, and I know some of you are super advanced in your editing and uh, Frankly, uh, this—I mean, I, I expect that you will be getting some value out of this. 
though the, the, the folks that we're really wanting to talk to, to here is uh, people who either don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes with video editing or people who are already down the rabbit hole and they're, just, and they're like, I am stuck, I am lost, how on earth do I do this? And so that's the idea here uh, to help you. First of all, if you do consider video editing as something that's really simple and basic, um, I would like to give you a peek into how cool and how deep things can go. And then uh, secondly, if the, uh, uh, it, secondly, if you are advanced, uh, I want to give you some tools to help channel your directions and uh, turn your content into everything that you want it to be. So that's the idea here. Um, so let me, let me just do a quick stop here. Do, 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 uh, what the? Okay. Quick stop for questions and comments. Do, 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 do. What's up, CJ? CJ Duran does some really cool. Uh, he does some really cool fishing videos. You should check out his channel. He's, he does some fun stuff. Uh, hey, Visual Magpie, howdy. After things, this will probably go for about half an hour, stopping down at, at like at the bottom of the hour. That's what I'm thinking. Um, Yes, the bay is definitely real because it's got all sorts of plugins. Although it was actually this, this edit bay here was actually used as a storage closet for a while. It's got a whole bunch of boxes in the corner, and so I just kind of like stack them all to the side and pretend they don't exist. Um, although this is, this edit bay here is actually a lot better than some of the edit bays I've worked in. I, I literally have spent months in a windowless closet with no vents. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just dying here. I mean, you show up to shirts, you show up to work in a, in a t-shirt and shorts and pray you don't sweat all day long. Okay, uh, to do, to do, to do. Okay, glad it's sounding good. Today's home inspector, thank you. Thank you for the feedback, everyone. So, all right, let's jump in. So um, just to get everyone up to speed, in terms of, like, of, of what editing is, uh, a lot of people talk about uh, a lot of people talk about video editing in terms of like oh well that's just where you cut out the bad stuff and you just cut out the stuff that you that you don't need, and that's 100% true. That is 100% true. And the thing is, uh, the idea of what editing is, it goes way beyond just like clipping off the top and the bottom of a video clip and hitting upload to a place like YouTube or something like that. Uh, it goes way, way, way farther than that. Um, I mean, just as a point of reference, uh, in the shows that I'm hired to work on here in Los Angeles, there have been times when I have been paid to work an entire week on a 90-second uh, on a 90-second piece that airs at the very beginning of the episode. They call it a cold open. Um, I know uh, if you, I, I see comments from uh, Joseph Pat Connor uh, goes by Pat. Pat works in movie trailers, so he knows all about the all about the time and intent on every single frame. It means like this this idea of television editing, film editing, video editing. It it's it's a big involved thing. So on the flip side, a lot of you might know that already, and you're like, well, tell me something I don't know, dude. It's like hello. Um, and the thing is, uh, first of all, uh, often we just don't know what we don't know. And uh, so the, I'm, I'm looking to fill in some gaps here for some folks who want to learn and want to grow. Um, so the, the flip side to not having any idea how advanced and complex editing can get is saying it's like, I know how complex and how advanced this stuff can get. This is just like, I, I, I'm going nuts here, man. Like, I, I, like there are so many, like, th there's so many different kinds of video. I, there's, there's so many different buttons to push. I don't know what software to use. And there's like, th then there's like, well, yeah, like actually creating content. It's like, how long is too long? And how do you actually shape this into a way that makes sense and actually tells a story and makes people feel things? And it's it it can get overwhelming. I mean, I've been there. I have, I have definitely been there. And frankly, uh, the learning process never ends. It never stops. Um, I always say that content creation, and in this case, video editing, 
Uh, it, it's something that's very accessible. I mean, it's never been easier to create video content. I mean, all you got to do, pull out your phone. Yep, yep. This camera is showing me in reverse. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Uh, you got all I have to do is pull out your camera, your your phone, and you can hit record and you can hit upload to a place like YouTube, and you can, uh, you and boom, you've created content, you've put it out in the world. And the fact that this new piece of content actually exists does not in any way guarantee that, um, that you're going to like it, that you're going to be proud of it, and that people will actually want to watch it. There's a whole world of thought and intent that goes into that. So just know, just know that um, when, this, this is the, uh, my, my aim here is to help give you some guidelines of how to approach the different roles of editing and the different hats we wear as we edit and some of the questions that we need to ask when this stuff happens. So before I go any further, I'm going to check out, I'm going to check into comments. Big G Media, Clean Bay. Well, you know, it's I, I will say I like to keep my workspace. I like to keep my workspace tidy. Uh, says I stopped editing to watch this. Fantastic! So glad you're here. Right on, right on. Um, Pat likes. Pat likes the uh, how to vlog without knowing the ending. Awesome. Glad it's helpful, Matt. Okay, so going back, going back to my, going back to notes here. Uh, okay, so. Those are, those are what I'm kind of thinking about in terms of the, the mental spaces that you might be in. Now, if what I've described isn't where you are, please tell me in the contents. I want to know uh, one of the main reasons I'm doing this, this live cast, uh, other than the fact that, well, other than the fact that I have incredibly little, uh, uh, incredibly little time available to me to do things that aren't on, you know, my time is very much spoken for just in general. Um, so I, I want to be able to interact more real time with you guys and really get to know more about who you are and what you want and how I can best help you get there. So here's the thing. In terms of, uh, it, it's, it's easy to say in terms of editing, it's like there's so much to know, there's so many ways to get stuck. And it's very, very true. So. Here are, here are, here's just a general state of the different hats that we wear when we're doing the editing. I, uh, I call these the three hats of the editor. And what it is, uh, we, there, are, there are three hats. There is the technician, there is the creative, and there is uh, the psychologist. Those are the three hats that I say uh, we wear as we're editing. So I'm gonna be talking about that not talking about each of those ideas. So now the idea of the technician, the role of the technician, that is really, that's what a lot of people, especially in terms of when they're just getting started creating on online content, that's what they think about in terms of video editing, the technician, the technical stuff. It's pushing the buttons. What camera do I use? What kind of video does it record? What's, yeah, how do I get the sound into there? And how do I get that stuff into software? And what software should I use? And when I get there, it's like, there are so many buttons on this. What, like if, if, if you have a, uh, if you have a general, if you have a general, um, I mean, if you have a fairly entry level piece of editing software, it often is straightforward and you can figure it out. But when you get something more advanced like, um, like with Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere, or I will say, or I will say, do, 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 do. turn that off and turn that off here. Uh, when you get more into something like this, this is this, uh, pretty much anything I ever do for pay is on a system called the Avid Media Composer. And, uh, about 95, I'd say about 95 to 97% of anything that you see on a television screen or, or, on a, uh, or on a movie screen is cut on this system. 
the, the media composer. Um, and Man O' oh Man, uh, media composer is, it's, it's the 800 pound gorilla in the professional editing world. And uh, I will say, it's like in spite of that, it's like trying to learn English as a second language instead of your first language. Like, it's like Avid was the first thing that I learned in terms of editing, in terms of a high-end non-linear editing system. And when people, who, when people who start out in Final Cut or in Final Cut or something like that, and they try to learn Avid, it's just like banging your head against the wall. That technician, <laughs> the technical end of things, um, it, 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 it really gets crazy, and Avid is not user-friendly, just in general. So um, that's, that's, <clears throat> you know, that, that takes a learning curve. Like the more advanced, ed, the more advanced your, your editing software is, the more, the more of a learning curve you're going to have with that button-pushing role. But do not, d don't mix up. It's like, okay, just because you know what tracks to put things on, and you, have, you know how to organize your, your workflow, and you know how to get things linking up to each other, that does not mean that that has anything to do with the stuff that you're actually building, and how you actually make people feel things, and how you tell stories, and it certainly has nothing to do with the audience or the people that you're doing this for. So that's kind of an overview of the technician. It's, it's, it, it is the technical, it's the button pushing stuff. So uh, that is, is something that you, you really do need to know like the back of your hand. And uh, I, I saw, I was on a, uh, I, I was seeing a seminar at one point and there's a guy who's a re-recording mixer at Warner Brothers. And he, you know, it's one of those guys who mixes sound on one of these, uh, on, on one of these consoles with, that stretch all the way across the room and with just like 300 channels on this, massive thing. It takes five people to operate. And he was saying that the more intense and the more impressive your gear, the more important it is to know it like the back of your hand, uh, especially if you're doing it on behalf of other people. So the higher up you get, the steeper the learning curve is with the button pushing. So that ha having said that, the button pushing is just the foundation for where things really start getting interesting. And that's when we start talking about the hat of the creative. Now, before we get into the creative, I'm gonna check back comments here, see what's going on. Do, 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 do. Pat, do you always have a set lunch hour or does that fluctuate? Uh, I have some flexibility uh, on, on this current gig um, they, they pretty much let me sit in the bay by myself and do my thing and I can go to lunch whenever I feel like it. But uh, this, uh, while I can't actually say anything about what show I'm at or what I'm doing or where this is, uh, let's, let's just say that there, there are a lot of rules in place. Let's just say that. Uh, yes, I've heard, farm along, I've, I've heard that live streams help the watch time too. So, uh, that's one thing that I'm looking to raise. So good point. And frankly, I think with these, with these live streams, I'm thinking that I should do more of these. So, okay. Salvador, what's up, man? Howdy. Today's home inspector. Yes. Camtasia is a totally solid uh, option for editing. Um, I use, uh, I use something like Camtasia uh, called ScreenFlow, and that's what I use to record the screen when I'm doing like editing tutorials, like when I'm inside Premiere and showing people what's going on. Uh, <laughs> um, do, 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 Big G Media, Avid is stupid stable. Yes, it is. Uh, doesn't play with all, well with others, though. Not quite sure, not quite sure what you mean, because actually, uh, in terms of like Avid playing well with others, that, in my experience, that's actually the number one reason. That's the number one reason why it is so popular among broadcast el uh, you know, television editors and film editors per se, because it is rock solid in terms of collaborating and playing well with others. Although if you're talking about, if you're talking about Adobe Premiere, uh, if you're talking about Premiere, it's part of the Adobe family. So you have something like After Effects that 
can actually go back and forth hand in glove seamlessly in a Premiere timeline. And so you can change your composition in After Effects and that'll automatically show up in Premiere. So in terms of that, if that's what you're talking about, it doesn't pl play well with others. Um, Avid doesn't do that nearly as well. I will agree. Um, do -do -do -do. Camtasia is expensive, says Volume. It can be. Uh, it, it depends on what you're looking to do. It really, uh, it, yeah, it, it, it does depend on what you're looking to do. Um, there are some super affordable options. If you're on a Mac, which I, I'm guessing if you're on Camtasia, you will probably... If you're on Camtasia, you will probably be on a PC, I'm guessing. Uh, there is a program called Sony Vegas Studio that is super, super affordable. It can do a lot of stuff for you. Um, Pat says, Stephen Cohn's book, Avid Agility, is helpful for making Avid more intuitive. Agreed. I've heard really great things about that. Justin Bennett, what's up, man? Good to see you. Howdy. Corolla in Paris. Uh, guten Tag. Good to see you. Although, uh, let's see. Is it bonsoir? Is that good evening in French? Something like that. I, I know like this much French. That's about it. Good to see you. Uh, Karen, am I a freelance editor or employed by one studio? I'm a freelancer, so I'm a gun for hire. Uh, coin operated gun for hire. You uh, book, book me on a gig and assuming everything lines up with a schedule and, and the fact that I actually want to do the gig, um, I'm very grateful to be at the point in my career where I can actually decide whether or whether not to, uh, to, uh, to take certain gigs or not. Because sometimes, some gigs, I will tell you, just life is too short. It's just too short. Um, ba -bum 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 -bum. Okay, moving from Power Director to Hit Film for editing. Yeah, after things. Yeah, I mean, you, find something that works for you. Find something that works. Justin Bennett uses Sony Vegas 13 Pro. Right on, see? That, and, I, and, I, and I've seen your stuff. I mean, your, your stuff is solid, man. Uh, Farm Alarm, use Filmora. Yes, that's very popular. That's very popular and it's very easy to do, yeah, very easy to use. Um, Corolla, I will, yes, live streams will be uploaded later on. So that's, that's going on. That will be going on there. Um, Asian Romance, do you find more part to make the video being driven by videos in your library? Um, Krola says, yes, bonsoir. C'est bon. Very good. Okay. Um, Asian Romance. Do you find it's more productive to make the video editing driven by videos in your library? Or do you find it more productive to record a voice narrative first and then go to find video clips? Uh, that is a really good question, Asian Romance. And I will say that deserves an extended answer. Uh, but basically, the, the the quick answer is it depends. Um, a lot of the time, it's more driven by the, con the uh, you always start out with a concept and then you move forward from there. And sometimes you have something like voiceover, which ends up being the spine for building things out. Sometimes you have uh, an interview that ends up being the spine for the piece. Other times, it's just you're, you have a piece of music and you're putting it together with, uh, with imagery and that's the foundation of things. So really, the short answer is it depends. Okay. Uh, Pat, is, is YouTube a good business opportunity? Is there a financial incent incentive for video bloggers to excel at their craft? Absolutely. Now, the thing is, this is also a much more involved and extended conversation. Uh, but I will say a lot of uh, people who put their hands to vlogging think that it was like, I'm going to build a huge following and then YouTube is going to just send me great big checks for advertising revenues. And occasionally it does get to the point where YouTube sends checks for ads although it's a lot harder to do that these days. Ad, uh, YouTube just put in new rules that makes it a lot more difficult to monetize your, your channel. But um, the way to actually make 
that the way to actually make good money doing this is to build an actual business model around it instead of just waiting for YouTube to send money, which might happen, but it could also stop at any given point. Okay, so caught up. Let's go on to the next hat, which, uh, so we've talked about, you know, we've talked about the idea of uh, what we consider video editing to be, whether it's this simple, like basic thing or whether this huge complex thing. And the answer is yes, it's both. It is true on both ends. And uh, to make sense of that, we're talking about the three hats that we wear as the editors. And we've already talked about the technician and uh, how to push the buttons and how that is important. It's critical. You have to know how that works. But where the magic really happens is in the other two hats. And so the next one is it's called the creative. Now, the creative is that's it's, it's just what you think it might be. It's the artistic side. It's the choices of what story am I telling? How am I showing it? Um, how am I letting this story unfold? How do I, you know, which, what music am I using? Is it driven by voiceover? Is it driven, uh, is it one of those things like we shall never ever use voiceover? I mean, I've worked on different, I've wor worked on different shows where there's just like, yeah, we, if, if we get a story gap or a story hole, we can totally patch it up with voiceover. That's totally cool. Uh, just finished, uh, just finished another gig where they're just like, we do not under any circumstances use voiceover, period. We let the scene tell exactly what's going on. Uh, so it depends. The creative though is that middle ground where we're talking about, it, it's that second hat where we're talking about anything you would think about the artistic side. And that, um, Really, I'm. <laughs> it, it is what it is. I mean, that there's. I could talk about what those creative choices are and talk about that for days, but uh, this is not the time for that. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump back into comments, see what else is going on. Cool. All good so far. Moving on. Very good. Very good. So we've talked about the three hats in terms of the technician and the creative. And then here's the crazy powerful. Here's the crazy powerful stuff. Um, just saw this before I go there. Blending images, today's home inspector, blending images with audio is more important than the super, super technical side to the beginner. Um, let me think about that. I'm just wanting to, I'm like, uh, just, just thinking about your content and what you're doing, and I just want to, I want to think about that for a second. Um, for the beginner, you need to establish a baseline of technical proficiency, um, and it's and it is a sliding scale. I mean, like, I, I think, I think. I, I think I've actually interacted with you today's home inspector on some of your comments um, and, and I and I checked out some of your stuff uh, and so it was like when, when you're talking about Camtasia uh, and when, when you're talking about Camtasia um, you should make you, you should definitely have a baseline of technical of technical proficiency and, and I believe if memory serves that you're saying that you're feeling limited by what Camtasia can do, and you may be wanting to move up more from that. Um, th at that point, the level for what needs to happen for your technical proficiency will rise because you have an expanded capability with your new pieces of software. But really, at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, it doesn't matter whether we're taking strips of film and we're cutting to get cutting them together with scissors and and scotch tape. I mean, that's literally how they used to put movies together back in the way, but back in the day. I mean, they literally, they physically cut film and with, with, with a razor blade and taped pieces together. And that's how these images, that's how these sequences were put together. It doesn't matter if you're using the most crazy high-end piece of software in the world or like the most expensive tricked out rig. 
or you're using film strips and a glue pot. It all comes down to what is the content and how is it put together and how is it telling a story. So hopefully that will, uh, hopefully that answers your question somewhat. Um, do, 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 checking out. Sometimes yeah, last minute panic is where creativity is pushed, says Justin. Yes. One of the things I always say is uh, deadlines force action. And that's literally what happened today. I was like, because frankly, if, if you guys have never done this, the idea, like, like right here, right now, and seeing that you guys are here and we're talking and all that, that's, I'm totally relaxed. I'm feeling good. Let me tell you, this morning, just the idea of thinking about going live was terrifying. Was absolutely terrifying <laughs> and so uh, and so I said it's like you know, what I have to do is I have to force a deadline and that will force me to say okay how can I actually deliver a message that is of value to people who will take the time out of their day to show up so that's my aim that's what I'm looking to do um, and yes creativity often gets uh, often creativity happens when you have limitations well, that's a big lesson. Um, it's I, I always, I always compare it. Give me one second. I'm I've not plugged in my, not plugged in things here. I, I want to get this guy. Plug you in so I don't die, on this stream because, that would be bad and I would be sad and I wouldn't be able to get to talk with y'all. Okay, let's get this. So one of the things that I always compare creativity under limitations is like you're walking into a Hallmark store. And uh, you walk into a Hallmark store and someone says, all right, pick out the perfect card. And you're like, uh, this store has 18,000 cards. How on earth am I supposed to find the perfect one? And it's only when you start adding limitations to it. I want the perfect card for my uncle who is getting married the second time. It's like, okay, well that all of a sudden, oh, and he likes funny, he likes funny stuff. So none of the mushy, happy marriage kind of like things like, like that. All of a sudden you have given yourself the opportunity to make a good creative, in this case, the quote-unquote creative decision because of the limitations. And so don't, don't say it's like, oh, I have so many limitations, I can't be creative. It's the exact opposite. Consider how you can be creative because of the limitations. Let's check out. Uh, ba -bum -bum -bum. Big G Media. How do you deal with clients' visions versus what they actually need? That, uh, the, the, the short answer to that is he who pays the check makes the decisions. Because <laughs> frankly, at the end of the day, if we're working for a client, uh, if we're working for a client, they are the boss, not us. And we can talk about what we deserve or artistic vision or, you know, it's like, but really, if it's their project, then that's what we need to be considering. And actually, I'm just going to jump right back now into uh, the third hat of the editor as the psychologist, because this is exactly, uh, Big G Media, this is exactly what we're talking about. Because the third hat that we have to wear as an editor, uh, and really in almost any kind of job where we're interacting with clients or, or with audiences, is we have to be a psychologist. We have to be, we have to get our mind reader act going on because there are multiple entities in play in terms of who we need to be speaking to. So the first one, uh, as, as Big G Media was referencing, is the boss. So the third hat of the, of the editor is the psychologist. And the first person as a psychologist that you have to speak to is the boss. And now, uh, in, in, my, in my freelance gigs, I have multiple, multiple levels of bosses. And, um, and that's because I am editing on 
behalf, uh, on behalf of someone else. It's not my project. I don't own it. Um, so they are actually the first audience. Some people might say you have to say, oh, you, some people might say you have to, um, you have to know who your audience is and you have to speak to your audience. And, and that's 100% true. And that's actually the second part of the psychologist hat is the audience. But that first primary audience is your boss. And uh, now, if the boss isn't happy, then you're probably not going to last very long doing this stuff. So nine out of ten times, what the boss wants, the boss gets because they're writing the check. Now, there are other times when it's like, okay, well, based on what you've said uh, and what, you, what, what you've led me to believe that you're looking for, I believe as, uh, as a creative working on your behalf, Mr. Ms. Boss, that it would be better doing X instead of Y because blah, blah, blah. But of course, it's totally your call. Just want, I just didn't feel like I would be doing my job if I didn't throw that option out there. I mean, you have to be a diplomat. Uh, if you want to stay in this and actually be hired again and continuously work, you have to be very diplomatic. Always be gracious. That's my rule. Always be gracious. So now for those who don't have a boss per se, uh, maybe you are your boss. So when it comes to story green light content, um, the boss is right, the, right here. It's this guy. And, uh, but even then, I can't, um, I, 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 I can't ignore the idea of I am always in service of, of someone. If it's not for someone who's writing a check, I am always in service and we are always in service as content creators to, uh, if not the boss, I, if not the boss in a literal sense, we're in service to the audience. That's the second part of the, of the psychologist hat. And the audience is mission critical to figuring out what we want to do, what actually is a good choice versus a bad choice. Because uh, one, one of the things that I say to people, one of the things that I always say is like, take the statement, you know, most of, most of the Story Greenlight community is in the United States, with some notable exceptions. Um, and I will say that, so, so just using the US as an example in terms of US culture, um, if you say the United States is a great country and you say that idea to someone who is well established, has a job, they can support themselves, support their family or whatever, and they're feeling safe, they're feeling secure, they would be more likely than not to say, yes, America is a great country. Now, if you say that, to someone who feels like they are experiencing injustice in the hand, at the hands of our culture, uh, who feels on, marginalized on the, out, on the outskirts of society, um, they would be less likely to agree with you that this country is a great country because uh, they, they have beef with this country and there's a lot of reasons to love the, this country and there's a lot of reasons to be upset and concerned about this country. So then you can actually go to some place like Finland, which consistently places uh, in the top, like top five happiest countries in the world. And you could say the U.S. is a great country. They're like, well, maybe, but I kind of like it here. And then you can then th you end up going to someone uh, in a war zone whose village just got bombed by American bombers and say America, that the U.S. is a great country. And they will probably spit in your face. Um, and often with good, 99% of the time with good cause because, but anyway, this is not a place to talk politics. I'll just step off that. So, <laughs> um, so the audience, it, you have to know who is the audience, what do they want, what do they expect, all these kinds of things, um, which is, which is a whole, which is a whole, uh, which is a whole discussion, which actually. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the last part of the psychologist hat, and uh, uh, which is actually, you need to know yourself, because as the editor wears these different hats of the technician and the creative and the psychologist, and as the psychologist, we need to know the mind and speak to the mind of our boss and our audience. We also need to know our own minds. We need to know, uh, we need to know what our strengths are. Uh, what we're good at. We need to know 
what our life experience has been and how that informs what we're building. Uh, we need to have our, our collective references for our collective references for for creative input. It's like our what things have we seen and what do we want to emulate? So don't it, it's easy to say it's like, oh, well, video editing, it's it's just doing a thing. It's like, well, yes, it is, but it's all this other stuff too. And these ideas, when you keep them in mind, this is how you can start saying, how can I craft content that really connects with my audience and lands with an impact? It touches out and reaches heart people's hearts and minds, really does what they what what I or my boss or or my audience wants to see happen. And that's where that stuff really happens. Now, many of you might actually have already gotten a copy of this, but I uh, there there is so much more in terms of what one can say, even just about the audience and like knowing the audience and knowing yourself and what you want to accomplish, that uh, I actually have an entire framework of this that I have put together. And uh, there is a link in the video description here. Uh, it's it's going to be this guy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's called 27 Craft Questions to Craft the Perfect Video. And I actually designed it such that you can get a copy for yourself and you can start looking at these questions and I actually put them all on this page here so you can like you can do what uh, what Story Greenlight community member Javier Mercedes did he printed it out and he put it up on his wall he sent me an email it's like hey notice anything on the left side of the screen he's uh, he put this up on the wall uh, these questions are showing you how deep the rabbit hole goes and the point of these questions is to say it's not about this guy telling you how to make your content. That's something that you can only know. This is all about asking the questions that help you think differently about your content so that you can make it everything that you want to be. If you'd like a copy of that, there is a link for a free download in the description below. Let's check out comments. Okay. Having too much footage is better than not enough, says Justin. Can't disagree with you. I would far rather have more choices than fewer. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, Pat says, I have a hard time breaking down, breaking down a project when I don't know what I'm looking for. Yes, it's it, that can be paralyzing if you're saying... Uh, if you're, if, if you're trying to make something happen, you don't know where you're trying to go. Um, 100%. Getting a footage is terrible. Trying stop motion and getting enough footage is terrible, says after things. Reshoots are really time consuming. I can only imagine, man. Uh, I am not, I am not a, uh, I'm not the kind of guy to pretend to be an expert on things that I'm not, so I know very little about stop motion, but man, I do know what goes into it. And uh, whew, that's some time intensive stuff. So that, that makes the creative planning even, even more important. And um, that, I, I don't know if you plan out your shots in advance with storyboards, but man, if you're doing something like stop motion or animation, that initial level of planning is mission critical. Otherwise, you will want to jump out a window. Um, let's see here. How can the average editor get more information on a specific audience? That depends, Pat, on that depends on what the audience is and what the medium is. So if you're looking, you know, if you're looking in terms of cutting trailers, you need to know what the, you know, what the broadcast or theatrical outlets for the trailers are, what kind of trailers they're going to be packaged with, and what's the crowd who's expecting to be sitting in that theater or sitting watching this. And um, so there, sometimes there are pretty straight ahead ways to know that. But other times it's like you you, you just got to dig 
um, and there's no set answer. Um, I, I will say sometimes you find if you're doing content creation like, like this right here, um, I'm on a journey myself in terms of finding out who the audience is. Um, I'm getting a better idea of that, um, which is why I'm so appreciative of you guys being here right now and uh, interacting because that's, that's important. It helps me know more about who you are so I can better speak to you. Excellent live stream, no reason to be nervous. Right on, man. Thank you, says Chief Avalon. Should storytellers consider the audience or the story they want to tell? The answer is both. You absolutely should consider both because you can, uh, you can have an amazing story that plays incredibly well to one audience, but it will fall flat to another. But, you, uh, but, it, but if you have an audience, you, you know, and, and it's just, it goes in the reverse, uh, you have an audience, you know your audience, you have to know what they will appreciate. So it's not, it's a chicken and egg thing. It's, it's both. Um, do I, do I specialize or stay general to stay employable? Um, I have, uh, Pat, I have a, I have a general area with which I stay employed. Um, my career background is exclusively in unscripted television. Um, at one point, I was wanting to cut scripted film and television, and um, that's not something that I'm seeking anymore. Um, I'm looking to maintain the work that I'm doing in the unscripted world, preferably in shows like if you look at my IMD, IMDb credits, you'll see I've done a lot of work for shows like uh, uh, for, for shows like American Ninja Warrior on, on NBC, uh, which I love cutting for shows like that because it's an uplifting show, it's putting something positive into the world. And so that kind of, that kind of content, that's what I wanna keep working on. So in terms of you, um, I'd have to have a more detailed conversation in terms of how to niche or how to specialize because sometimes that varies on your, on your, uh, on your own situation. CJ says, the question list is a little beastly, but I'm working on them. It, it is. It, and the thing is, there will be some of those questions on the download, uh, which, again, uh, it's, uh, you get a copy for yourself, everyone. If you haven't already, the, the uh, download link is in the video description. Some of those questions will be more important than others. And I will also say um, I'm putting together a video training to talk about each question more in depth. And... Um, already shot that and in the process of doing that I actually uh, I actually revised the questions and cleaned some things up so that's gonna be that's gonna be even more helpful um, Asian romance what kind of tools do you use to organize video clips and photos uh, that depends on your software that you use but within like right here um, there software like Premiere and Final Cut and Avid and those kind of things, they all have hierarchies of, uh, they, uh, they all have hierarchies of folders and subfolders and that's how things stay organized within your project. And you must, must stay organized when you have any kind of good amount of content that you have to wrap your head around. You have to know where to find it. And that's sometimes the biggest challenge when you're working on a piece is it's not like you, you can make the decision. It's like, I want this to go next to this and this will flow that way. But then it's like finding the damn clip. <laughs> and so if you can't, if you're not organized, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So um, short answer, uh, short answer is uh, organizing your video clips and photos. It depends on your software. And you also need to make sure that you have some sort of system on your own computer to keep the source material organized as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Two themes or ideas of telling a story live versus edited says today's home inspector is so different. I found the audience is more forgiving when telling a story live than edited, which is why I'm here. Well, awesome, fantastic. Yeah, it's. Uh, this is a completely different medium. This is a completely different way of exchanging communication. 
Uh, for one thing, it's a total two-way thing. It's, it's weighted more towards me sitting here in my room talking, talking to this green light <laughs> on my laptop, but, um, but it is definitely two-way. Uh, whereas if you, everything is edited, you have to be very specific, you have to be very intentional, and it is pretty much one way, until you get it on a place like YouTube where you can get more interaction. After things, you use comic book theory for pre-production. Awesome, very cool. Um, do, 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 do. Why, uh, TBH Raiders all day, why does the Nikon have an audio jack? I have no idea. I do not shoot with Nikon, so uh, that I'm not sure. Video training sounds awesome, says Crawl. Sweet, very good. Um, when should I ask myself these questions, says Pat, as early as possible? Yes, ask them now. Then continue revising your answers as you go on. Cool. So, well, you know what? This is, uh, it's about time to wrap up on this because my lunch hour is coming to an end and frankly, I'm hungry. <laughs> so um, thank you for being here. Just want to make sure I uh, tell you one more time that we have the, uh, like if you want to get a copy of these guys, that link is in the description below the video, uh, it will change the way you think about your content. Uh, and the reason I know this is because it happened to me while I was writing that list and while I was putting together the training for that. And that's a whole other story. But the list of ideas that I've been using my whole career and I've been, and, and I wrote that list, I still ended up thinking about things differently when I actually went through the content. It's like, so this is why I know without a shadow of a doubt that it will transform your content. Everyone who creates video should get a copy of that list. And otherwise, uh, let's see. Otherwise, I would love, I would love to answer more questions and I do need to sign off here. So, um, I will be, uh, the other thing that, one last thought, when you, when you do get that download for the videos, uh, that'll get you on the email list for Story Greenlight and that will let you know when we're going to be doing more of these, which frankly, based on how this goes, I think we should keep doing this. So there you go. All right, guys, I am heading out. Thank you so much. Uh, and bear in mind, bear in mind, uh, this at the end of the day, this is all about communication. This is about connection with people. This is not just about pushing buttons. This is not just about pointing a camera out there. This is about taking a message that can reach into the hearts and minds of people and can change the way they think. They can change the way people act. And literally, what we are doing as content creators can change the world. I've seen it happen. It is happening. And it is an honor to be here with you on that journey. I'll talk with you soon.